Hi, now we're going to take a look at how to build the fourth report in our dashboard for distribution series. And this report is con involving inventory control. What we're going to do is we're going to create a report that shows us what items need to be reordered, who the primary vendor is for the item site combination, and then we could utilize this to help us evaluate who we need to order, including narrowing and searching things by item class, as well as item number, site, or primary vendor. So let's do this now. So I'm in GP 2013 and I'm in my inventory series. Now I already have my Excel reports, um, the, the default out of the box Excel refreshable reports pulled up. But first let's do this in SmartList. So I'm going to open up SmartList first. And I'm going to open up my inventory object and item quantities. And here you can see we have a default one right out of the box, items below order point quantity. Now as I pull this up I can see my items, my item description, quantity available, the order point quantity, the quantity on, or, on order, quantity on hand, and the order up to level. And this is really great, but it does not show me the site, it does not show me the primary vendor, and it does not show me my item class. Now I know in SmartList I could go to Columns and Add, and I could find these things and add them directly in the system. So we should have our location ID, so let's find that. Here's our location code, primary vendor. and item class. Now this is all well and fine, but one of the things that it doesn't do is, it doesn't allow us to, if we export this to Excel, then that means every time we need this report we'll have to go through the same process. I also want to take the time to point out that um, some of these are set up for all sites, so it would show the item for all sites, and some of these do not have primary vendors set up with them. And that's okay, that just means in inventory there wasn't a, a vendor a site combination set up with a primary vendor. Okay, so let's go through the process of building this now. So we know we could use this default uh, SmartList object, items below order point quantity. So in my navigation pane on inventory, I've pulled up Excel reports, and here is the one we're looking at. Uh, two is the database, item quantities is the group of objects that this is in, and then we have items below order point quantity. Now in yours you should only see two, um, remember this is my sandbox and I've got all kinds of things going on, so just ignore my bottom two. And you should have one that says report and then one that says data connection. So let's double click on the one that says data connection and Excel is going to open up for us automatically. If you get this, just go ahead and click on Enable. That's just a, a Windows security feature for uh, Excel. Okay, so this is what the report looked like when we first pulled it up in Excel. So we want to add those three additional fields. And to do this, this is a little bit of SQL work, so if you're not comfortable with the next steps or you're not familiar with SQL, then enlist the support of someone on your IT team or enlist the support of, support of your partner. It'll only have to be done one time, so it's not an every time scenario. Once they get this Excel file ready for you, then you can take control of it from that point forward. So I'm going to choose data from my menu and connections um, on my ribbon. And then in my workbook connections, I'm going to choose properties. And on the connection property window, I'll click on definition. And on this window, we can see that we have a SQL command out there. You can see the command type SQL as opposed to table or default. And here is our SQL command text. So I'm just going to do a control A to select all of it, and then control C to copy it to my clipboard. So then, in my Microsoft SQL Server, um, I'm going to open up my databases, open up the database for that I'm building this report for. In this case, it's the two database. I'm going to right mouse click on Views and choose New Views. Now, you could do this in Query if you want to. I just like working in Views. I personally find it easier. Okay, so I'm going to click on Close. I do not want to add a table. Instead, under my SQL View pane, I'll just highlight what's there and then paste by doing a Control V all of the transaction or the, um, the SQL command that I copied from Excel.
And you could actually see this is how it knows which one to get. It looks at the order point quantity and pulls up the ones that are greater than quantity available. Okay, so let's click refresh here. And I'm going to close out the criteria pane. And I will just, um, actually, I'll uh, let me drag this up a little so you could see. I'm getting exactly the same fields that we got in SmartList and that we got in Excel with the Excel Refreshable Reports. But you'll also notice I have a lot of other fields that I can add. And the cool thing about this is these are all the other fields that are available to us in SmartList. SmartList actually uses this view, Item Quantities, for all of the objects in the Item Quantity section. So I will add my location code. I will add my primary vendor and I will add my item class, just as I did in SmartList. And I'll refresh, and now you can see these fields are available. Now, unlike SmartList, if it is looking at all sites, it'll be blank. It will not say all sites. So that's one thing I need to be alert to. So now in my SQL pane, I will just highlight all of that code and do a Control C to copy it to my clipboard. Back in Excel, under my connection property, I'll just delete all the command text in there and paste in new command text, and I'll click OK. I then get a warning that it's no longer going to be identical to what it was, and that's good, so I'll click Yes, and then Close. And now you'll notice I have those three additional fields in my Excel spreadsheet. So now I, what I want to do is create a pivot table. So I will click Insert and pivot table. It'll select my entire table in Excel and create a new worksheet for me on my workbook. And now I have my pivot table canvas available for me. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is take my inventory location and drag it into rows. And now I can see all my inventory locations. And then I'm going to take my item number and drag it into rows. So now you can see I have my inventory location and then the items. Now I want to get rid of all the ones that say all sites. So I'll choose from the drop down list and I'll just unmark that one and click OK. And now I only see the the sites specifically because I don't really care about a site summarized. I'm looking at fulfilling quantities at specific sites. OK. So now to get the actual values of the amount I need to order, I'm going to need to create a calculation. So I'm going to need to first say what is my order up to level, subtract the amount I have on hand, and subtract the amount I have on order. And I could do this by creating it a column in here, and then it would be available to me. That would be a certainly easy way to do it. But I want to show you how you can add a formula. So in Excel, on my pivot table canvas, I could see pivot table tools on my menu bar, and on I have an Analyze ribbon available here. And if I select the one calculation for adding a calculation for fields, items, and sets, I can then choose to add a calculated field. And this is where I can create my amount to order. So my formula will be an equals order up to level. So I can just click on it to highlight it in this insert field minus and I could also just double click on it, quantity on hand minus quantity on order, and then click OK. And now I get all of the quantities that I need to add. Now, in this particular case, I don't want to see subtotals by site because I don't really care about how many grand total I need to order. All I care about is a specific number I need to order. So what I can do under Pivot Table Tools is go to Design, subtotals and say do not show subtotals and now for each of my sites you could see it does not show a subtotal unless I collapse it. Alright so that's pretty cool. So now what I want to do is just um, do a, add a chart to it as well so I could see all of these items by chart. So I will, I'm going to just expand these back under Pivot Table Tools, Analyze, I'll choose Pivot Chart, 
and I'm going to do a side-by-side -side bar chart. So I'll click OK. So here's my chart. Drag it out a little bit. Okay, so what you could see is for each site, I can see the site grouped together and the items next to it. So here's my chart. Now what I want to do is tell it that I want to be able to select by primary vendor or by item class. So what I'm going to do is insert a slicer. So I'm going to click on Analyze again from Pivot Tool Chart. Whoops. Well, I could do it from the chart or the pivot table. Analyze again, and I'll choose Insert Slicer. And I want to insert the location code and the primary event. Whoops, not the location code. The primary vendor or the item class code. So now when I'm looking at these, I can select just the ones that are AT&T cords. And you notice because the chart is based on the pivot table, it will update dynamically with the pivot table itself. If I wanted to see every, if I'm on the phone with like advanced office systems, I can immediately see, well, I definitely know I need 200 of these um, white 12-foot uh, cords. Or if I'm on the phone with this electronics company, I could see which items I need to add. And in this case, they all happen to be for the warehouse. Now, it looks like I have a few items that have negative numbers. I'm not sure why they end up showing up on our calculation, but maybe I don't, I definitely do not want to order those. So I can come in here and choose Row Label, Value Filter, and say is greater than, when the sum of the amount is greater than zero. So none of the negative ones will show up. So now what I want to do is just format this so that it fits the colors for me. So under Pivot Table Tools, I'll choose um, Design and select a color scheme. The same with my chart. I'll highlight the chart and let me get rid of a couple things on here. I'll click on the plus sign. I'm going to get rid of, um, well, just the, just the title. I don't need the title on there. Um, I'll keep the grid lines and um, trying to decide if I want the legend or not. I guess it doesn't matter. And if I want to get rid of these things as well, these that are in in uh, highlighted in um, gray, I could just click on my chart and under Pivot Table Tools, Analyze, I could just click on the icon, not the drop-down list, but the icon. So I could just click on the icon and they'll all disappear. So that looks a little bit cleaner. Then I can go to Color and select a color scheme that matches my logo. For my item class, or uh, for my slicers, I get slicer tool option when I select one. I'll choose option and again select colors. And I may even want to align these and group these together. The advantage of aligning them, we'll align them to the top and we'll group them together. The advantage of that is it makes it easier to move them because you could just Click, one, click in the general area and then you could move them around everything all in one fell swoop. And then we'll add our logo. Insert picture. And this becomes a very practical report for us to use. So we could determine who we're ordering and which items need to be ordered. Hope this helps.